Let's go with what would make this interview a home run if you look back in three months? What would make this interview a home run? Everyone who hears this interview subscribing to Beige Lad on Twitch that, and that and another be. Twitch stream by Beige Lad. I, I stream quite a lot, to be honest. But okay, your, okay, so your in, schedule. <laughs> okay, listen, mate. I couldn't even find my mic stand, so I'm standing here like, like I'm a pop singer. <laughs> Are you, well, you're sitting. You're not standing, but yeah. I get you. That's what you think. I'm actually just really short. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're tripoding, really. You're like three mm-hmm. three legs. And I'm, I'm leaning on my like, <laughs> bro. Any chance to talk to you just really lights me up. I mean, I think we have a grand old time. But we can talk about the heyday of your Twitch career, which is obviously when I was in it. <laughs> I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, have you ever recorded a podcast before? No, actually not. Mm. I've recorded various things, but not actually a podcast. The closest okay. thing I've done to a podcast, I mean, just... No, that's not going to work. Okay. The closest thing I've done to a podcast was when I was when I was a kid. You know how you could put like in, in like the old GTA games, you could put custom radio stations in? Mm. It's my friend and I, we sat with like a little headset mic. And we recorded Mm -hmm. a whole custom radio station for GTA San Andreas, reporting on all the shenanigans that we got up to in in like while while playing free roam. Yeah, it was great. That's great. I like that a lot. It was just back to back new metal, and then back to back new metal, and then these little reports of us reporting on all the various crimes that we did while free roaming. We made little ads. It was great. It was hilarious. That is a lot of work to have something like that custom in the the game. So that's awesome. I like that. I was 12. (laughs) Cool. Well, should we get started? I assumed we'd already started, but it's fine. (laughs) Essentially, I just wanted to warm you up a bit. I don't want to go on cold and you'd be like... Yeah, you. Foreplay is important, right? Uh, Yeah, you don't (laughs) want to be frigid. Anyway, I want to get into that. (laughs) This is fine. All right. Welcome to Behind the Backspace, where we discuss mechanical keyboards with streamers and people in the community so we can get a better upside of the process and state of the hobby. Also get to know Mr. Cujo a bit better, who is not actually stalled. He's just being the master South African that he is. How you going, Cujo? I know, going all right. Stealing time from work. So if I need to like stop randomly to answer a call, you'll know. You, just assume that a major city in Europe has lost power. Yeah. Or your Suzuki Swift has crashed into like a power pole or something. No, I already gave that back. The thing back to the insurance so fast. I hated it. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, pretty chilled. I mean, mm-hmm. just had Easter weekend. We, was, we were going to go to go visit the in-laws, but because of ongoing delays with my with my mechanic, I've not yeah. got the car back yet. So I just sat at home, friend down from Germany. So Friday night, we went karting, go-karting. It was a pretty good time. No complaints, really. Awesome. Been making good coffee at home, eating mm-hmm. way too much sweets. Drinking Dr. Pepper, which is now making me burp, obviously, as it does. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not making a train announcement, man. Like... <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Train number 43 to Adelaide, departing in five minutes. Ad- Adelaide, really? <laughs> so where are you from? Like, what's your origin story? How far back do you want to go? As far back as you want to say, I guess. All right. All right. So I come from a small <laughs> town in uh, the Western Cape of South Africa. Yeah, it's about two hours from Cape Town. I'm not going to say in which direction. Yep. Went to high school in a slightly larger town as a boarder, uh, mm-hmm. about 45 minutes from Cape Town. Studied in the same town for a year, did like a one-year certificate web development, then went to an art school in Cape Town, studied motion design, which is why mm-hmm. I have these, these lovely graphics, obviously. I did all of this in After Effects, like I'm doing it live, you just can't see. It's <laughs> true. It's definitely not a static image in NVIDIA Broadcast. That lava but, is flowing, uh, I can see it. Yeah, as you can see, yeah. Yeah, so studied motion design, finished, hated mm-hmm. it. Got a job developing co- developing software cool. for a little startup, still with them. 
And cool. yeah, now I live in Cape Town. Life is good. In the tiny ass into nowhere town anymore, which is always good. Yeah. What has been going on in your life recently that you like expected or didn't expect? Jeez, that's a very open-ended question. Basically, what's been going on? What's yeah, been happening, I mean, bro? bro? Yeah. Yeah, well, some of my friends got married the day <laughs> after the day before my cousin got married. Yeah, so so I went to two weddings back to back last week. I was knackered. Yeah. The first one was quite fun, quite cute, it was my good friend. The second one was my cousin. And I love my cousin dearly, but I didn't know a single other person there that wasn't family. And most of the yeah. family members I wanted to hang out with were preoccupied with their kids. So mm. I didn't really didn't have much to do there. Left early because I was borrowing a car that I needed to give back. And yeah, but I mean, it was a nice wedding. They had good food. They did like, they did little like skewered bits of meat, like did like a big braai. So there was like chicken, mutton, beef, yep. and then side salads and stuff. It was really good. Really fun. Like the babs, yeah. right? Babs. We call them susatis. Susatis? There you go. I don't know that. Yeah, so they're less interesting than kebabs, really, because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's basically just the meat and maybe, it's just the meat seasoning, maybe a sauce yeah, or a marinade. Oh, yeah, South Africa is like, well known for their meat and like how they're making really good. Yeah, but Australian beef is also like quite known. <laughs> yeah, not as much. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll do a lot of milk. But I, I wouldn't yeah. expect our beef to be very amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I heard Australian beef was good. But maybe. <clears throat> well, it maybe could be from down south. Like, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you got Queensland area. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you have to understand that cows are like grapes. You have to put them in the worst <laughs> environment possible. <laughs> that thing with winemaking is mm. that the best wine comes from places with really shit conditions for growing grapes. Yeah. Like New Zealand, for example. Yeah, yeah, and and South Africa because it's and South Africa and Australia That's because true. it's relatively dry, so the grapes will overproduce sugar. The sorry, yeah, the vines will overproduce sugar in the grapes as a strategy for birds and things to come and eat the grapes and spread the seeds around when there they poop. A man of knowledge, a man of yeah, culture, a man who's Wikipedia. definitely not searching things on the side on Wikipedia. Hey Siri, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> What's been on your mind recently that you hope to share with the listen- listeners of this podcast? Good Lord, what's been on my mind that I want to share with people? I don't think anything on my mind should be shared with people. I think most people this will be true. scarred and disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at my shirt. This is not the shirt of someone who should be sharing their thoughts all that often. There are therapists out there. They may be listening. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop the signal. Yep. I love 3D printers. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, they are great. I really love 3D printers. I got a... I have a dice tower that I use for D&D. Let me grab it. It's, it's friggin' dope. Oh, there it is. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's you're behind the, It's behind the fire. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, so you take your dice. Put it in the eye or something? And you put it in the eye and it comes out the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love that. And inside of the skull, it's everything from like the eyes down is more or less anatomically correct, oh. which is cool. So how does it so, shuffle the dice enough to be random? Oh, so there's like a, if you can look here, there's like a little pathway. So oh, it goes okay. back down here and then comes back. Like oh, so. then it comes out. Okay. So you get some sort of a randomness to it. Yeah. It's as random as throwing the dice. Because I, I, I did a, uh, a dice tower one time and I could put it in in a certain way and every single time it would come up the same. I was like, that's not very... Good to know. I'll... Good to know. I need to get a dodgy dice tower like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those dodgy ones that looks like a castle tower, basically. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very easily manipulated, <laughs> unfortunately. There's this board game that I played once. I think it's called Wingspan. In the box, it comes with a cute little dice tower that's like a birdhouse because the game's all about birds. And like learning yeah. fun bird facts. It's really cool. It's really cute. Really fun. Not sponsored. No. <laughs> the, I played Cards Against Humanity <laughs> recently, and it's just the game is getting dated. Mm. We're yeah. now, you, what, 10, pe- 12 years? People need to buy the new updates, but they don't. And then there's always the same answers yeah. like yeah. You know, anal beads or whatever. Like, uh-huh, the uh-huh. best is still playing <laughs> cards. 
I don't know if, if Which? you're if you've blank cards where you can just write. Oh, blank ones. Yep. Yeah. How I play it is if you win Cards Against Humanity, you get to write on the on one of the blank cards. So Oh, so what we did was we got like a little I think we used like a wide piece of tape or something, so you can write on it with a dry erase marker. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. a smart way of doing it. I was not that smart. I, just, <laughs> no, I did it as like a law thing. So like a law. Yeah. You know, the law. Is that sounds like really you, cool. You too. played my game and then you get to be in my game forever. Yeah. That, that's also really cool. So it's like different strategies, mm. right? You can mm. like, it's not the one method smarter than the other. I think yours, mm. if you're playing with the same people very often, that's really fun. Yeah. That's it. What did you have for breakfast today? For breakfast? I forgot to have breakfast today. So I guess I, I had my lunch, which was green beans, bits of potato, sliced roast potatoes, and, and some minced beef with veggies mixed in. Jeez, that's overly healthy. I, yeah, I, I'm I trying just... out this meal kit thing. and It's meant to be like, yeah, because I'm getting fat. <laughs> no. To be fair, we had six pizzas last night. <laughs> so I'm balancing it out. That's true. Now, I'm on the fence of whether to ask this question, but... Ask it. Who is your celebrity crush? My celebrity crush? There are a few. Could be like a... Could be keyboard streamers, or it could be like actual celebrities. Like actual... Not like the micro celebrities. (laughs) I don't think I have a keyboard streamer who's a celebrity crush. Not that they aren't all beautiful people. Just, I feel like I know them too. I feel like I've, I, I feel too parasocially involved with them to have a crush on them at this point. That's because they're my friends now. Mm. They're really my friends, Beige. Mm. <laughs> they're, they're, um, they're, they're like brothers or sisters. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and why am I a sister? Exactly. That's because you're just so damn cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no worries. That's mate. all I was um, looking for. That's all I was looking for was a compliment, man. No worries, mate. (laughs) If we can go for internet micro celebrities, I mean, Mm. gotta go for the classic lean beef patty, right? (laughs) She's a fitness person. She's like really ripped. It's very no, no idea. Mm. No, she's jacked. I'll I'll say. Or if you want to go for the classic, for like an actual celebrity, early Scarlett Johansson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's good. Mm -hmm. I like that. For me, I don't know why, but it's Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know why. Um, She's just yeah. more uh, less celebrity, more dumbass. So it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's that. It, yeah, her marketing team did a pretty good job there. Yeah, keyboards. Keyboards. Yes. Now. we love keyboards. You love keyboards. I do. What? What other than keyboards is one of your favorite hobbies? I know cars, D and D. Yeah, dyeing your hair, being emo. No, this is my natural hair color. I've dyed my okay, hair so once just, in my life, and it would annoy me. You, you didn't say anything about being emo, though. Oh yeah, well, obviously. I mean, look at this fucking. <laughs> I'm kidding. Other than that, coffee. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty pretty into various methods of making coffee. I'm literally mm-hmm. staring right this second at like three different methods of brewing coffee oh, in yeah, my nice. flat, on my kitchen counter. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that's a pretty big hobby. Is it? Do you have yeah. like cold press and the full on drippy thing? And I don't know what they're called. But... So, so I've got what's called. So I've got a V60, which is like it's this cone that you put a paper filter in, and then you put in your ground coffee, and then you have like a special kettle that you pour from. Yep. And you do like little patterns, not little patterns. You're doing like little swirly pattern. And you swirl back. Yep. And Like I, I, I filter my water. You know. Mm-hmm. I've got an espresso machine, so an espresso machine, not a Nespresso machine, because Nestle, <laughs> bastards. I agree with that because Nestle is a yeah, bit of a also, and then also I have what's called an AeroPress, which is mm-hmm. like it's this plastic piston type deal where you yep. put your coffee and you put your water in you, yeah, and then you make like a concentrated coffee that you can water down. So that's how I like to do it. Some people disagree yep. with that method. There are various recipes that people do, but it's pretty cool. It's like a cross between between like doing like a French press, like normal old filter coffee. Mm-hmm. And it, it tries very hard to be espresso, but it's it's not really. Gotcha. But it's it's, its own unique thing, which is really cool. Really cool, yeah. really fun, really portable. I really love it because I can fit my coffee grinder inside the 
air press, mm-hmm. more or less. So I can pack it all as like one little thing. Oh, that's and nice. then when I go somewhere, it's really nice. It's really portable. That's awesome. On a side, I guess, question. Yeah. How dangerous is South Africa for you? Right this minute where I live, not really dangerous. I'm in like a relatively nice part of town. But my perception is that, for example, I don't go outside at night, really, unless I'm mm-hmm. driving. Nope. Um, because my I consider it more or less a necessity to have my windows tinted in my car for one for the the bloody heat, yeah. Uh, two for the two more of a safety thing. So if someone mm-hmm. tries to smash the one of the windows to either hijack me or steal stuff from the car, it takes a lot longer to get through if the windows are tinted with the right yeah. type of tint, like a smash that's and grab true. film. So that's something I consider more or less necessity. I once drove past a cash and transit robbery where I think I've told the story to you before, but yeah, I was driving through like the northern suburbs of Cape Town on a, like a sort of like an almost motorway, like, yeah, quite a big, busy, wide road. So lots of yeah. traffic there. It wasn't that much traffic on a given day. And I thought, oh, this is great. It's not so much traffic as usual. Drive down. I see these security guards and like cops all over the street with like rifles That's and i saw tricky. like a smashed toyota hilux right up against one of these armored trucks yeah well a couple of bullet holes in nearby walls models of cocktail still burning like little like like they dropped it and it didn't shatter so wow. yeah <laughs> so they're gonna chuck it and there's like boonk, just sat down yes no i think i don't know what happened i think they might have like it might have just rolled mm. out of the car when they because they normally carry multiples from yeah, what well. I understand, they'll have but, two or three, and then the idea is that they're trying to throw them onto the truck so that the people inside get out because of the heat. Of course. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> I haven't even thought about how you would get someone out of an armor car, but you've got, like, all the ins and outs of all of that sort of stuff just because you're living in a country which is fairly dodgy. I watched a documentary on it when I was in high school. Um, I was okay. a weird kid. <laughs> That's I I like that sort of stuff as well, but I, I, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty I common like thing. It it's a pretty common thing. Yeah. Also, have friends in the security industry here, like private security companies. They've yeah, they've told me some horror stories from work. A guy I know once someone was someone had someone was burgled, and he was one of the first respondents. So he mm. tried to hop the fence, and then his boot got stuck because a spike. That, so they, the people who are on the house, they had spikes installed on the other side of their fence. So that if someone hops the fence, mm. they would not get have, in. have spiky things in their feet. And well, luckily he didn't get a spike thing in his foot, but it, the, it went, through the, went through his boots and got his boots stuck. <laughs> Crazy. He was really lucky that it didn't go into his foot or his leg. But yeah, mm. so he had to like slowly detach his foot, not his foot, his boot. So it's either take the boot off or like slowly try and pull it out. Foot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just just plug and play. Pick up another one from the foot store tomorrow. I always want to ask that something because yeah. it's so left field that we don't have that same culture here. Like it's very westernized yeah. where it's just such a different experience for you on the yeah. daily as well. So it's yeah. I always find it fascinating when we talk about that sort of stuff because it's just so far different from what i've I've ever experienced before it's it's totally it's weird for me when i go to to Mm. to europe for work like specifically germany maybe sometimes netherlands and they're just like yeah everyone wants to go out like 11 p.m i'm like are you sure you're just gonna walk there (laughs) is that safe yeah yeah and they're like and like these people like they live in like what they, what they consider to be a shit pot of town. There are only like two yeah. methods. Like, <laughs> yeah, which is pretty crazy. I mean, yeah, yeah. Anyway, back to keyboards because yeah. this is really what we're supposed to be talking I about. Think, yeah, we've been here for like half an hour, and I haven't <coughs> said. I, I think I haven't said the word keyboard once so far. This is well. There you go. You've said it once now. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, we can wrap up the podcast. No, uh, that, that's it. All <laughs> that's over. it. Yeah. Cool. See you all next week. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's> it. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Damn it. Um, so, how long have you been in keyboards, and who has taught you the most okay. about your mechanical keyboards? Ooh, okay. So, I got into. So, I initially discovered that mechanical keyboards are a thing that exist in about 2015, maybe 2016. Yep. 
When I stumbled across the R slash mechanical keyboard subreddit, some of the guys at school were starting to get their little Razer Black Widow keyboards. I thought they were stupid, but I thought it was really cool that I could change keycaps. And like, I was like, oh, that's cool. The whole customizability aspect. I've always really been into personalizing and customizing things, which is ironic because all my cars are as OEM as possible. But then 2016, I got quite into looking at different like ergonomic layouts and all that stuff was really interesting, but I never had any money. Right. I was like, I was a student. My parents gave me $10 a week for like snacks at the tuck shop. (laughs) And so... Yeah, I guess you could say that to some extent I've been into keyboards since about 2015, but I started, my first keyboard build started in November of 2019 and it took me three months. And what I was building was a Soffle, but I built it from scratch with no instructions. Mm. Like (laughs) Um, everyone else, because Soffles are horrible beings that should die in a fire. No, they're excellent keyboards. (laughs) What keyboard is on your desk right now? PLX. Can you show it? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's a heavy boy, right? Yeah. There you Ooh. go. So nice. it's got GMK Arch. I think these are Stabies. It has broken in Cherry MX Blacks. There you go. And nice. HHKB layout. It's got the, the cool weight, which is it's super shiny. Look, look, there's you. That's terrifying. <laughs> but cool. No, I like that. Oh, and then on my work well, setup, I've got 7V. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me about your favorite keyboards. And can My we favorite see them? keyboards? Sure. So we've This is legs. where you can show yourself so softly, softly yeah. if you want to. Cuz so so full for me is just my well there's your 7V, nice. Yeah, with Geekok very traditional. Mono-hungu. Yeah, and Geekok mm. Monohungle, which was I think designed as a collaboration between Frank and Penbird. Frank and Mushiki. This is my yeah. Panda 41, which is there you go. An acrylic version of the Revyung 41. Yep. And you've got like a cane or something? Is it called cane? I don't, I don't know. The corn. Pronunciation. Corn? Um, yeah, the corn K-O-Y-N is or like something? half built. You've oh, got a Romeo as well? No, I don't have a Romeo. I've built oh. a Romeo. That was a client yep. build. No, so Keen was a company that brought in a lot of the open source PCB kits to South Africa, but currently the owner's on hiatus because he's traveling a lot for work and just doesn't have time to pack and ship orders. It was a one-man operation. Yeah, let me go grab my other favorite keyboard. Well, that is, that's life. So mm. here is my Soffle. It's currently, it's yeah, well, this is a Pantoffel case, which was yep. made by a mate of mine. I bullied him until he made it. And he sold a good few of these, but I think he's also currently just absolutely swamped with work, so he doesn't have time to use the machine for his personal projects, the CNC machine. Yeah, so I've had a few of these. I keep rebuilding them and then selling them and then rebuilding them. Nice, because you do have quite a few PCBs laying around as well, don't you? So for them. Not anymore, but I bring in a few every now and then I redo them because I always like to make little tweaks to the board. So for example, I used to have these blue PCBs, which I just didn't really like that much. Then I switched to, then I built it without socketed pro micros. And as often happens with pro micros, especially the OEM ones. Yeah. The bloody micro USB port falls off because they're (laughs) made out of tin foil. So then in the process of desoldering the ProMicro, I ripped up a bunch of traces from the board, as one does. And even yeah, better. So I like, you know what? <laughs> bugger this. Bugger this. And I tossed it. Then ordered the PCBs that I have now. I like it. just plain black PCBs. And then I put on KB2040s, which are pink. Mm-hmm. Very cute. USB-C Very cute. using RP2040s. Mm-hmm. I can, they've got more storage space for the firmware, so I, so I can use the screens to make slightly longer animations. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, so I really enjoy messing around with the fir- with firmware on boards that have OLED screens. Yeah. Look, um, so these boards, these types of boards are really horrible to type on for like the first week. Yeah. After that, you think that after that, once you've got used to them, you think that every single other keyboard in existence is fucking stupid. <laughs> because it's yeah. so comfortable when you get used to it. When you get used to it, yes. 
Yeah. But it's trying to get past that, I guess, barrier of yeah. continually using it without getting frustrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, you need to it. get past that initial barrier, and then after that, mm-hmm. it's great. Um, who has given the most influence in your keyboard life? Like, is there someone most specific that you could think of? Life. Ooh. There are a lot of really influential people, but I would say that a is lot it, of people have really tried to turn me away from ergo layouts and they think it's bloody mm. stupid, which yeah. just makes me like them more. Like my keyboard, I think maybe I would say you, you never met the streamer, J Perms. No. Yeah. Mm. So he was an Aussie streamer who is <coughs> part of how I got ingratiated into the Aussie keyboard side. So at one stage, there was this whole thing of like, Kuja's basically an Aussie keyboard streamer and everyone always lumped Mm -hmm. me in with the Australians to the extent that they thought I was in the same time zone. Yeah. But so these, so so I'd say JPEMS because he basically got me into streaming and his Mm -hmm. sort of network of acquaintances and friends to some extent molded my taste for keyboards. He also, along with Classic Rory, designed the PLX which is to me, uh, it's the best sounding, feeling, and looking board that I own by a country mile. The 7V awesome. is in second, Pantoffles in third. So, sorry, and sorry, Andy. But yeah, it's just, I've got essentially what I would consider the th- to me the three holy grails of like what I want in keyboards, which is why I haven't really built all that much lately. I'm, I really enjoy mucking about for 40%, but... So probably J Perms and then also Ant who runs Custom KBD, not sponsored. Just his kits being available and just yep. like having sat on Discord with him and the boys for a lot of the pandemic and the year after. Yeah. Um, just really, yeah, it was that I was like, we just sit and talk rubbish about keyboards constantly. And yes. they'd talk about K-pop and I'd cringe and... And then we talk about Formula One and we'd play a lot of, we had our, used to have our weekly little racing league, which was really good. Yeah. I just had, so cool. yeah, it's like, I mean, that was really influential to me. It's cemented to me in what I felt the keyboard community should be like. And that's yeah. how I try to. So with the SAKB Discord, I was like the third person to join and I eventually right. became moderator there. And I tried to foster that sort of community, like no one gets excluded from that channel. Nice. Don't tolerate, don't, I mean, unless they're being dicks to everyone else, in which case I'm like, mm, okay, fine. You can bugger off. Like, don't be dick. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it was, we've got, but it's like, so, and, and I think, so our community is basically an offshoot of the Aussie community. Custom KBD orders, like, <laughs> were like 90% yeah. of what a lot of, or were, were on what like a lot of the old keyboard heads in South Africa started on was, this one massive order we made to Dino Keys, rest in peace, mm. and and a massive order we and a, a few massive orders we made to Custom KBD. <laughs> yep, that's awesome. What do you think most or the majority of people get wrong with mechanical keyboards? Thinking that they're better for gaming. They True. your keyboard is so long as your keyboard supports N key rollover and you're able to mm-hmm. hit more than like three buttons at once or two buttons at once. Yep. Um. It doesn't really matter. I you won't see a marked difference between I, I, in ninety percent of cases. You might be some sort of like osu, like legend who needs a million hertz polling rate because you're cracked, and you just you're just the physical embodiment of ADHD medication. <laughs> then I'd be like, okay, sure, maybe you can really tell a difference. But your average FPS player yeah. playing like competitive Counter Strike, mm-hmm. Over Overwatch, if that people still play that. Rainbow Six no. Siege. What's that other game that everyone plays? The Riot one, Colors, the Counter Strike knockoff, oh, Valorant. Valorant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that. Like, if you're playing any of those games, your keyboard is the least of your worries. Mm. Spend all your money on your mouse, and then get a good keyboard yeah. afterwards if you have anything left. Like, that's it. Look for a high polling rate. You can look for a high polling rate. It'll help, probably. That's I guess. Cool. Uh, I like look that. for. I like that a lot. Being able to roll over on multiple keys. Like, you don't need to spend so much money on a keyboard. Yeah. In saying no. that, what are bad recommendations that you do here when people are buying keyboards? Um, like, do you generally like have to correct a lot of people? Be like, hey, don't do that because of. I don't correct XYZ. people. I don't correct people. <laughs> I be, let them make the mistakes. Case, no, not that. It's just that if what you want 
So let's say you're buying a Corsair K70, if they still sell that, I don't know. If you're buying Corsair K70 or Razor Black Widow, if that's what you're going to enjoy in this moment and what's going to make you happy, then Mm -hmm. who am I to tell you that, no, you should buy a Keychron or no, you have to buy a 7V to be as cool as me? Like, no, you don't. I buy the 7V because I bought the 7V, one, because I got a really good deal on it, Mm. two, because I just think that the 7v has like this beautiful design and i really love the design of the board that's why i buy it i don't buy it for good gaming performance or anything like that what so yeah you've already covered this question but like how did you fall into streaming you said it was like more j perms was pushing you or yeah pushing well, you, he wasn't like... pushing me but he was streaming and i thought hey that looks like fun i'm gonna mm. if i'm building this softball with no basically no instructions i think i did have the guide but hmm. the guide in 2019 and the guide that you have now are very different still yeah, is useless been, though. oh no it's pretty good it's pretty good <laughs> i'm still so mad about that you had, the problem you had was the rgb yeah. nonsense yeah. when i was building the software the first hmm. time there wasn't the they, they didn't have rgb on that yet but yeah. Uh, so the and, and finally, I can talk to you about this. But the RGB <laughs> on the Suffle, you yeah. were bridging the wrong pins. <laughs> Doing yeah, what so it told it, me in the document. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. I didn't. You were misunderstanding okay. the documentation. But yeah. also, that guide was not written by the guy who invented the Suffle. That guide was written by the guy who made the RGB Suffle, which is somewhat completely yes. different. But basically, so there was a pin that goes up and a pin that goes down, and the one pin was for was to power. I think the underglow and the one was to power the backlighting. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think you were running, you didn't have underglow LED. You didn't have backlighting LEDs. You had underglow only. Underglow, yeah. You kept sending power to the to the backlighting LEDs. And that's why it wasn't working. Be true. Doesn't matter. But it's I, out of I, my hands. Yeah, so <laughs> me trying to explain that to you on over Twitch chat was really difficult. Yeah. Because you were already quite frustrated and I think you weren't really interested in what I had to say at that point. Just Which like, is totally fine. I mean, I get I, that. The, the keyboard works overly. Uh, that's all I care about. I didn't yeah. About that. I, yeah. So the functionality so of that was not my priority. <laughs> and so um, there's a reason why these don't have RGB because yeah. I think the RGB is stupid. Although I think no, this could look good with Underglow, but like I just I couldn't be bothered. I think it just adds complexity to the firmware that I don't want to deal with. Are you heading to any keyboard meetups or anything like that? Do, are, are you looking probably- at Keep Life maybe or? Even oh, though God, it's very, no, very far away. I just bought a yeah. car. Dude. I can't want to fly anywhere right now. <laughs> true. That's true. <laughs> but, well, we're doing a little, a, a small little Ca- Cape Town mechanical keyboard meetup. We're doing two small ones because we couldn't agree awesome. on a date. Most, half the people wanted the beginning of the month and half the people wanted the mm-hmm. end of the month. So we're doing two small little meetups of about five mm-hmm. or six people each. We're going to go to a nice cafe. We're going to have some coffee. We're going to bring on nerd shit along. And we're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be groups of like four, five, six people per per event. Yep. Excuse um, my yawning because it's you know one a.m. here. But how? Actually, how dare you? Here, drink I this. I wish I have this. That's the same. Nice. But Stop I've already pepper. had two of those. So but interesting yeah, thing um, is, that I think we get Hungarian Dr Pepper. If you look at cool, this thing doesn't focus, but it's got what looks yeah. like Hungarian. On the bottom which is wild that's crazy all right well let me rattle mm-hmm. off a bunch of rapid fire keyboard questions and see how we go Sticky. with that yeah yeah um fine. favorite switch Ooh, that's tough that's actually really tough because every switch i use has had a character to it that and i, I like no well, two favorite of my recent the switch then what are these Bubblegum, marshmallows, something. Bubblegum and marshmallow? <laughs> They're like, they were a limited edition Switch. And, and I got the okay. last ones, these ones. They're getter on Switches, I think. Okay. I really like them. I just can't remember what they're called now because it's been a while okay. since I did keyboards. <laughs> Are they 62 uh, grams or what, what sort of weight? Yeah, I think they're roughly 62 grams. Give me a second. I'll quickly pull the information for mm-hmm. them. It's between... And I think my broken in Cherry MX Blacks. They've yeah. both been really mm-hmm. nice in their own ways. Uh, but I think probably for switches that I can still get Hyperglide Cherry MX Blacks that have been actuated like a million times or something. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> They've been just pretty, 
pretty dope. I really enjoyed them. Nice. Favorite yeah. keycaps while you're looking. Favorite. Up. Favorite. I really like my GMK Arch. It's got it's got the jokes. It yeah. sounds really good. I think it looks really good on the PLX. It's just a great combination. Let's see where it is. Split backspace, yes or no? Split backspace always. If always? I can, always. Always. There you go. Oh. My 7V has a split backspace. My PLX has a split backspace. My fake key cult <laughs> has a split backspace. And then my other boards all one new keys anyway. So yeah. in theory, the backspace. So now what about space bars 6.25 seven new split what are you into that depends on the keyboard so because and i build a lot of ogre layouts i have a lot of really small backspace and backspace, backspace yeah bars. i suppose you would yeah it's a silly um, question really <laughs> my my 7v has a mm. 6u space bar because i like having i like having the bigger alt and con and control keys Yep. because I press this a lot, but I use I use HHKB layout anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But I like having the bigger alt keys because I use alt gr a lot, yep. and my PLX is a seven U. Yep. Variety is the spice of life, right? And, and you've already said look, I had another question was your best sounding keyboard overall, but you've already said it was your PLX hands down. PLX. Um, yeah. uh, the, the switches were Tron Blue Bubblegum switches. Gastron Blue Bubblegum. Okay. And if you were a keyboard shortcut, what would you be? If I was a keyboard shortcut, cut, control X, because I'm destructive. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. I get it. I get it. I like it. Do you have any questions for Beige Lad? That's me, oh, good Lord. Way. I had so... Oh, ri- wait. You're Beige Lad? Yeah. I thought me. you... I thought, I thought I was just talking to a secretary. Like, <laughs> how's the family doing, dude? Yeah, very good. Very good. Little one is not so little anymore. She's now one. Oh, and nice. The other little one is now four and a bit. So she'll be going to school at the end of the year, Damn. which is that's, that's absolutely wild. terrifying. Wait, so you guys, so so kids in Oz start school at eight, at five, five? At five, yeah. Yeah. Um, what? That's like a kindergarten kind of deal? No, that's like basically preschool, but like. Yeah, year oh, okay. one kind of thing. Preschool year one or year zero, whatever you call it. Yeah, so so because we we start at you, you got your academic year starts and end starts in like February or January and then ends in like mm-hmm. December, right? Okay, so yeah. it's the same as here because we start. I think it's six, so oh, yeah. you'll or you'll be turning six in the year that you're in your pre. Yes, correct. Whatever year. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the same, the same as. Yeah, basically. So like okay, no, my daughter no. will turn six in the same year. But okay. she if she, if the thing is if she was born in May or like April, she would have gone to school May or April. It's weird. Like once you get past half the year, they go, No, you have to just wait an extra half year, then That's go really to school. That's really I don't understand that at all. <laughs> like there's some of the kids that have turned five and that was like literally like two months ago, fine, they went mm-hmm. to straight away. But up until I think it's April, Wait, March, so March, April, something fifth, like that. Do you go into the school, into like your pre- preschool? Yeah. Or- yeah, basically, yeah, on the fifth birthday. So, so, so for us, you'd start at the same time as everyone else at the start of the academic year in like February or whenever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's at your so, parents' discretion, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. So like... There was kids that were in her class that turned five. Yeah, when was it? Like, I, I think it was like around now, like April last year, and they went straight into school. But because she's born August, they they won't take her until the end of the year, which doesn't make any sense. So, so, so to my me, question is: So my question is, does she start classes in August? They would like they would have, but they don't allow her to do that. So she would then have to start in January, January. or. Or February, okay. yeah. Which is but if it were if it was in March, she would start school in March. Yep. It doesn't That's make any sense, odd, dude. Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> like, like for me, it would just be like, okay, so you're born. I was born in '97, so I would start preschool in what 2003 thereabouts. Yeah, I'd start in January, February 2003. Yeah, but yeah, they do it weird here. I'm not sure why they do that. 
yeah, it happens weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll say Queensland is is like that. It's yeah, it's yeah. more of a Queensland rule. Fair enough. Um, um, I've got yeah a couple yeah. other things to. I, I have to ask you one thing though. Does it bring you? Does it bring you great fulfillment seeing people's faces light up when you come to deliver their ice cream? A hundred percent, it does. It's that's the best part of the job is like seeing people even grown women grown men like literally yeah. running out of the house like ah, like, like <laughs> cheering because the ice cream man is there like it's literally the one retail job where everyone is genuinely yeah. happy to see you, to see you. yeah do you, genuinely and happy. Then what do you have to say to the lactose intolerant um <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> I, that's great what, that's great what can i do man like the thing is the where i work is mm. they have the freshest milk it's none of this milk solids or anything like that it's actually like yeah, yeah, yeah. milk direct from the <laughs> cow kind of thing yeah not direct but like as close as direct to the cow into the machine to churn and all yeah. the rest of it rather than like it's been dried because. it's been powdered blah 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 it's been processed then yeah. reconstituted then additive is added and all this it doesn't have any additives it's just like we maybe one or two preservatives it. but you know that's it's the most healthy so, ice cream you can get in queensland <laughs> nice basically nice yeah so it's really good you seem, you seem really that, proud of that well yeah it's awesome because it's literally yep. they the cows and whatnot they're yeah. in Toowoomba which is like an hour away from here the, oh, the literal cows I know and stuff someone right to Woomba. There you go. No, the literal cows and stuff are there in Toowoomba and they they milk them mm. and then it basically goes on a truck directly to the manufacturing. So like is, it's really crazy cool. how good that is rather yeah, than yeah. something that has just basically a bunch of ingredients bunch and then processed. In it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we have a place close to where close to my flat um I think the milk's maybe not quite as fresh as yours, but they make my favorite ice cream. It's like, there's none of that, like, when you have, when you eat like a whole tub of ice cream, like a 500 mil or kilo of ice mm. cream, you, you know how you feel afterwards? This ice cream does not give you that feeling. I can eat two tubs and I just, oh, this is the lightest, greatest thing ever. It just tastes good. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's really good. And they also do really good dairy-free ice cream, which is... Actually, interesting because I struggle to like. If you hadn't told me that it was dairy free, I wouldn't have noticed. I have friends who can't consume dairy for various reasons. It's That's good. Fair. They do. They, the thing is, what I appreciate is that they do both really well. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they don't like second best it just because yeah. it's not dairy yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah. they do have wacky flavors for the dairy free ones. Sometimes, like mm -hmm. they've got, I've got in my fridge actually because I had I had vegan friends from Germany and they mm -hmm. come over and so I got some ice cream for them. And uh, the ice cream I got was beetroot chocolate. So it was beetroot based ice cream. That's like what they use to get mm -hmm. the texture. Right. And then the actual flavoring was chocolate and ginger. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty nice. I, I can't eat a lot of it, but because the ginger to that. Beet root, it's nice. Like, ginger. It's got yeah. the right texture. Like it gives you all the feelings that ice cream should give you. Okay. As long as it's cold and it tastes good, who cares really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cold, it's sweet, it's it's chocolatey, it's got the little bit of that like zing from the ginger. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you've had like ginger snap biscuits with chocolate on them, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like that. It, it it tastes like that. Do you want to see my keyboard? Yeah. No, actually, I don't. That's fucking sick. Oh, that's the Tech Deck keyboard, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is that a, is that a Tesla sixty eight with? It is just a Tesla sixty eight, but it like has hey, the mod it's not just a Tesla sixty eight. Don't disrespect the venerable Tesla sixty eight like that, mate. That's true. But like, you can modularly no, put those on because I left it on there, so it's sick. Um, so you can move it around, whatever. Okay. You can put the railing on. And all the rest of it, but you know, I can't really show everything on here. But I like it because no, no one has one. <laughs> yeah, that's sick, because, dude. Uh, it's it's so sick. Yeah, because no one has thought to combine tech decks and keyboards before, but it, it makes sense, no. especially as like a gimmick. I, I hate to say the word gimmicky because it has this negative connotation. 
That's but true. I think it's but a cool game. Of the same age age group of people that are into keyboards would be into tech, so that's why I went down that road. But also because it's fucking awesome. Because <laughs> it is. I mean, as a kid, I was always into skateboarding and stuff like that, scraping my knee, yeah. smashing my head. Uh, you you know. seen my... Have I showed you my skateboard? No. Let me go get it. Okay. So I really like sk- the idea of skateboarding, but I always, mm. I'm always so hesitant to actually do it. But I bought yep. myself this. Um, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it's by Almost Skateboards. Little stickers on it. Yeah. Now that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I really like it. I have ridden it uh, for maybe 45 minutes in total. But, but yeah, yeah this. fun mode of travel. So is that? there's is a lot of hot glue. A yeah. lot of hot glue, but also it's half a tech deck because general tech decks are like double the size. Yeah, so yeah. I come up to there. So I just literally hacked it in half. How my, are you planning on replacing the batteries when they die? With my soldering iron. Because that's my <laughs> no, the batteries are still replaceable. I've got a little gap here, so you can still oh, like, I see. Pop so it you out. can still like pop it yeah. and then okay. yeah, okay, still pop it out. But you so. thought of everything, mate. Of course, <laughs> it's a custom keyboard that's now, awesome. and you plus know, you it know, actually you... it sits at a better angle now as well because it's mm-hmm. the height as well, so better you angle for talking on it. Times in chat, but you're a little bit of you got some ingenuity on you, don't you? Yeah. Oh, look at you not taking. Look at this guy not taking a compliment. <laughs> Take the compliment. I'm, I'm not used to it. Thank you. Take the compliment. Kujo. Thank there you, you Kujo. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kujo. You uh, you deserve more flattery. You're a good guy. I hate that. <laughs> I hate You're that a you good did guy. that to me. I'm sure your kids will grow up happy and well cared for. Oh. I don't care about that. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. My kids are pretty awesome, and they are, in general, like really nice kids. So that's good. Apart from the one that just screams all the time, but she's one, so that's just how yeah. it is. Yeah, that's all I got, basically. All right. Well, let's see. Thanks for being on like- behind the backspace. Yeah, no worries, mate. I thought there were going to be more questions, honestly, but I just noticed that we are one hour and seven minutes in. So I guess your planning was. But considering that uh, the start of this was like eight minutes of faffing about. <laughs> well, exactly. So, like, we're basically on one hour. Yeah. Already. So. Look at this guy planning um, so well. Everyone uh, subscribe to Bayside. Give him and Amazon your five buccarinos. Yeah. Well, this uh, is going to be on YouTube. But yes, yeah. You can do, subscribe to do, him on do, Twitch. Twitch subscribe Prime. on YouTube. Twitch Buy Prime things off his profile. He's got really cool shit there. Well, I don't really sell stuff. Anyway. Give him uh, and just give him money. Throw money at Beige. Support his kids. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for joining me on Behind the Backspace, and I have enjoyed well, chatting to you, Kujo. Yeah, man. let people know where to follow you or where to catch up with you. Well, you can find me on Twitch. I will be back. Mm-hmm. I will promise. Tw- Twitch <laughs> slash Kujo twenty six. Yeah, written out because cause, all the uh, words. Some, it took 26 with the digits and the number 26 is important to me oh we because that's gone how old you are right now but no because i <laughs> oh actually we could go into this if you want if you have time <laughs> okay well let As me a... ask the question then so it's yeah. more legit yeah, Kujo, yeah. Where, where did you get your name from like how, how did you okay, come up with that so, name? so around 2013 i had a mate called amon 26 we're still mates. we still talk she's yeah. really cool she makes games and stuff so we met on like a game making forum and we were just like talking and stuff and like i really like the games that she made and uh, yeah so i used to fence in high school as well these sound like two really unrelated things but i broke three weapons in a fencing match because they were old and yada yada but uh, yeah fencing so like sword fighting competitive poking with the stick that's, that's very <laughs> posh well i always think fencing comes back to being posh but it's probably not you know yeah it's i mean it's a bit but so yeah, yeah anyways i did so, so so i used to fence and i broke three mm. weapons and i was telling my my friend amon about this and she was like damn cujo and i was like what <laughs> she's like oh no because you're a mad dog cujo from the stephen oh. king novel dog with rabies mad dog yeah yeah 
And so I was like, oh, that's a really cool name. So I made started mm. using that as like my handle on the internet. Yeah. Uh, switched from whatever the hell I was using before. I think I had like a random different name for every website or something. <laughs> and yeah, so I started going by Kujo and I was like, okay, well, I should credit the person who gave me the name. So 26, yep. I'm on 26. And anyway, so, oh, so nice. the reason I'm on uses 26 was because she was signing up for a website somewhere and mm -hmm. people took the name Amon and she literally just went through like one, Amon 1, Amon 2, Amon 3 until she got to and the 26 one worked. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So uh, yeah, it's, it has, the name has some meaning to me, which is nice. It's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, unlike Beige Lad is just, I am, You're a lad yeah, I, I am. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, you, you look more pink until the light gets on you. That is true. Pink light. Well, I mean, it's because my eyes are the same color as my hair. It's hair enough. Hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like all of the hairs. So yeah. it's just like, what more could I be? And plus, I'm fairly average at games and stuff like that. So that's why my name came about. It was like, I was more beige. I mean, back originally, back in the day, my name was, I think it was just poop. Like literally poop. <laughs> P zero zero P. That was it. That, like that's that, that suits you. Not because yeah, you're that shit, was... but because that's funny and you're really funny. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I was just like poop. And they're like, Why are you poop? I'm like, uh. Ah. But then I would proceed to like win in Counter Strike. And then once I got part of a guild, I had to change my name. I was like, so I can't change it to remember. shit. <laughs> I think it was just like this S T Z. I think that's what it was. S T Z. Which is that just, is the most early two thousands Counter Strike thing I've ever heard. Stiz. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, that we we would say, like, oh, uh, you, you've got the Stiz, which is like Styles. You've got Styles. That was my. I was basically called Styles. But you've got. Uh, the, okay, got so, it. Yeah. Yeah, that was my uh, online name. Was just Styles because like I would win, and it always be with Styles, like jumping off, doing a three sixty headshot yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sick. Dumb that stuff, so but sick. yeah, that's back. Oh, no, but that's cool too. And now my hand-eye coordination is lackluster. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. So being an mm. yeah, as you, I think once you go past the age of twenty-five, there's just basically no way you can be competitive in Counter Strike anymore mm -mm. because of, I mean, uh, I on on decaying reaction time on pubs, I can still like beat all the filthy casuals yeah yeah because yeah, you can yeah because you'll know strategy and you'll be like pretty decent at setting shots mm. up but once you reach like the pro level where everyone's strategy yep. evens out and it becomes a little bit more twitchy yep. yeah no way more tweaky yeah you would say yeah twitchy sure. yeah <laughs> where well, you're flick you know flicking more yeah. and doing whatever it's not so much a hand-eye coordination thing you'd probably shred me at counter-strike i'm really bad at that game well i mean I had been playing it since day one, so yes. I, I started say. playing in 2005, so you've got a good few years on me, about seven. Yeah, I, I played when it was like 96, whenever it came out, like 96. Oh, I think God, so, okay, about nine years on me, all right. Yeah, <laughs> so I think that's when it came out, like <laughs> Half-Life came I out. Was and born, then, dear God. Yeah, I think that's when Half-Life came out, it was like then, and no, then like... Came out the count I'm pretty sure. Counter Strike mod and yeah. you know, all that stuff, but it was like way before all the other stuff. So, but I mean, I was playing Prince of Persia. I was playing heaps of games back then. My cousin used way to before. love Prince of Persia. Half Life was released <laughs> in November '98. There you go. So I must have been around '98 because I was going to massive lands back then, like 700, 800 people yeah. to play. We yeah. had one land like that, and I never got to go to it because my parents were just like no. <laughs> We're not carting you all the way to Cape Town for a LAN. Let's go play That's games funny. with strangers. No. Well, no, I, I took my computer, which was a 486 DX 66, oh, yeah. which was absolutely rubbish. And I had a TNT Reva graphics card. Hey, that would have been really baller in 1994. This is true. But it was a TNT Reva, which was, I think, two megabytes of RAM. Yeah, on the graphics card, and yeah. I would play Counter Strike on that, and I would beat other people because basically because my character would be lagging, but I could see them. <laughs> so yeah. I, it was like a hardware glitch back then. You could have really shit hardware, and it would glitch on their side, but your side would be smooth. I was just like, "Yeah, we're just gonna cut out <laughs> the end of the stream." It. 
uh, like from earlier, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so um, I, yeah, I, I, my PC that I first played Counter Strike on was an AMD Duron, one gigahertz. Mm. Oh, with, there you go. Yeah, with a Radeon 7000, 64 megabyte mm. card. Mm. Yeah. ATI, Radeon 7000 VE Family Edition, something like that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, That's it decent. was it, that PC was hard bottlenecked by the 512 megs of RAM. <laughs> I, I've and actually the, got a PC in right. my garage, which has I think it's like four megs of RAM in total. I'm like, bro, that's wild. That's, it's I, so cool. I recently <laughs> had to take to to e waste recycling a PC that's RAM. I think was still measured in kilobytes. It was my dad's old 286. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love talking yeah. computers. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, my, uh, my mechanic has a 286 in his workshop that he keeps just for like tinkering around with because he wasn't originally a mechanic, he was a printer tech. Yep. Wow. And uh, he still has the original keyboard, which has white Alps in it. And he, yes. he was really jazzed to show off this white Alps keyboard to me. <laughs> Because well, you got to steal, steal like, it off him one day, or like buy it off him one day. Uh, no, he uses it and he really likes it. So I'm not gonna. I will buy a different White Alps keyboard because I'm sure I can find one. Because I found the Facebook, not the Facebook, the like online marketplace that all the boomers in South Africa use. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go shop there, and I'm not gonna tell anyone about it. Have you seen right. the Japanese one? There's a Japanese um yeah, marketplace. Yeah, JP. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where I bought my HHKB, which is currently not with me. Mm. And. Yeah, there's so much beige stuff there, which is crazy cheap. Yeah. Except you pay for shipping, but you know, overall. Yeah, but the shipping is not bad. Hmm. I don't know. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So now we can actually say yeah. So goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. <laughs> yeah. Give Give you a hug. Is that what we're doing? Uh, e-, e hug. Yeah. I was just <laughs> making a big gesture, but you know, yeah. I'll come here beige. <laughs> <laughs> st- stick my tongue in your ear. Don't forget. No, maybe. No, you didn't do it. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can stick your tongue in my ear. And uh, that's in the after show, Beige Light After Dark. Right, right. Yeah, subscribe to my Patreon for that one. Subscribe to my chatter, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Follow our podcast behind the backstage on YouTube, which is actually on Beige Lads YouTube. And share your thoughts, questions, suggestions for future episodes in the comments below. Thanks for that.